Can I have your attention, please? Welcome, everyone. Our next speaker is uh, Yoshinori Matsunobu, and he will be speaking about RocksDB storage engine through MySQL. Uh, please give him a warm applause. Hello? Oh, good. So I'm Yoshinori, so I'm a database production engineer at Facebook. And I'm also leading a project called MyRox, which is our Facebook's new project to create a new storage engine for MySQL. So let me talk about our Facebook's background at first. So we are, at Facebook, we are very heavy MySQL users. So we heavily use InnoDB. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm not allowed to talk about number of servers, but uh, we use a lot of uh, MySQL servers at Facebook. So we are heavy users of InnoDB. So we started InnoDB compression, started using InnoDB compression about four years ago. So we have optimized, added many features like uh, online deflag to InnoDB. So, uh, but so Facebook uses many database servers, but our budget is limited. So we cannot uh, buy an infinite number of machines. So the, at our scale, the efficiency, the reducing the number of database servers is pretty important for us. So uh, the, the, today's talk about MyRox, which is a RoxDB, the LSM database engine for MySQL, is our uh, new initiative to uh, save space on our database servers. So this is today's agenda. So at, at first, uh, I'll talk about uh, B3 and InnoDB and its issues on discount flash. And uh, I'll talk about the log structured merge trees, uh, LSM, pros and cons, and I'll introduce MyRox and RoxDB, and uh, I'll cover some RoxDB features, MyRox features, and uh, I'll show some benchmarking results. So hardware trends and limitations. So SSD uh, or flash, it's getting affordable. So it's pricing is getting cheaper and cheaper. So it's m much more affordable than five years ago. But MLC flash is still expensive. So TLC flash is very cheap, but it's a bit uh, scary to use on the database servers. So on a hard disk drive, the hard disk drive, the spindle rotation speed is not improved much. So it's about 100 IOPS per drive. But space is increasing. But the, uh, even though the space is increasing a lot, but like a four, gear, uh, four terabyte or six terabyte per spindles, we cannot uh, utilize all uh, the storage space for database servers because space is, uh, IOPS is limited. So, so reducing read and write IOPS is very important for database servers. So uh, read IOPS can be reduced by having a huge cache tiers on top of the database servers, like memcache. But the reducing writes is a bit harder, so because the cache cannot uh, reduce writes. So writes eventually has to uh, return to the database. So SSD and flash, so the SSD is great for read IOPS, but the space and light uh, endurance is limited. The space is limited, and uh, light endurance is an issue on flash. So if you write huge amount of data to flash, then flash burns out, uh, then uh, the flash can't be used anymore. So reducing space and uh, reducing light volume is very important. So let me talk about uh, what's the issue with the B3s. This is a uh, pretty general, the B3 structures. And uh, here is an example of the inserting some data into a B3 index. This is a message table, the primary key right, message IDs. And there is an index on user IDs. And they insert into message, and the user ID called uh, 31 or 10,000. So this, in this table, the user ID is inserted pretty randomly. So in this case, the, the data is stored in B3. So the, on the leaf blocks, the data, uh, real user ID data is stored. But the 31 and 10,000 is pretty far uh, 
are located uh, on the very different blocks. So to store these data, uh, databases has to read these blocks, then has to write data, then write data back to the disk. So these are the random reads and random writes. So if you, for example, if you insert n uh, records, so in that worst case, then different random reads and random writes per index might happen. So this is uh, the many random reads and writes are involved when using a B3. Another issue is light amplification, the so light volume. Uh, suppose, uh, for example, adding, a changing a flag, the one byte flag from zero to one of the uh, user ID, uh, ID equal 10 or something. To do that, the in ready, it needs to read from data, uh, read uh, from disk. Then caching in the buffer pool, then modifying one record, then writing the entire page. So in the DB, the one page size is 16 kilobyte. So writing back the 16 kilobyte to storage. So even though you modify just one byte, the entire 16 kilobyte page becomes dirty. So these 16 kilobyte pages has to be written to the storage. So in this case, the write amplification is 16 k. And the InnoDB supports a power failure protection scheme called the double write. So if the, uh, when writing data, the, when the power uh, is down, so it has a mechanism to recover data. So InnoDB, actually by default, it writes data twice to storage. So the real write amplification becomes 32 K, so which is huge. And the B3, the fragments, went gradually. So this is an example when, uh, inserting into message table uh, where, where ID, user ID equals 31. And suppose the uh, user ID data is filling the leaf block. So the 31 cannot be inserted here. So in, in this case, the leaf, B3 leaf pages, the splits into two. So when uh, the split is, the half of the B3 pages are empty. So it's only 50% of the space are used by applications. Then uh, inserting 31. So in this case, the, the fragments about uh, twice. So the real space increases twice. Uh, this is the worst case. But in practice, so it's, it's very un, uh, common uh, to frag that fragmentation increases the space by 50% or even more. So the fragmentation really increases space. So this is an um, uh, issue on the fra when using flash. So in the supports compression. Uh, we are very heavy <laughs> user of the in the compression. So in the compression has some issues uh, on space from space point of view. So suppose there is a 16 kilobyte in the page and it was compressed to a five kilobyte. So it's relatively good compression ratios. But actually, the InnoDB uses eight kilobyte on uh, space on the storage because the, it's aligned to uh, uh, internal kilobyte pages. So InnoDB uh, supports a multiple uh, block sizes, but uh, when using four kilobyte or eight kilobyte, then it's aligned to a four kilobyte orders. So even though you used only a one, or one, uh, one or two kilobyte, it uh, actually uses four kilobyte. If you uh, maybe use it five kilobyte, then it actually uh, occupies eight kilobyte space. So MySQL 5.7 uh, started supporting punch hole compression. It's a new scheme, but uh, it, it's aligned to uh, operating system sector size. And on modern uh, flash devices, the four kilobyte sector size is very common, not five and two bytes. So it's aligned to four kilobytes. So it continues to use eight kilobyte space, which is a huge overhead. Yep. So there are lots of space and the light amplification issues, issues on B3s. So on the other hand, uh, there are different interesting uh, the database, the storage mechanisms. Uh, is, Imagine, uh, this is called the LSM, the log structures merge. So this is a uh, uh, RocksDB architectures, the basic architectures. I'll describe more in the later. But uh, there is a mem table, which is uh, caching lights 
and the right uh, log files for disaster recovery purposes. Then it, uh, gradually the mem table entries are flushed to a storage, and the mem tables are flushed. The file called the SST, the sorted string table, is created, and uh, gradually the files are compacted. Uh, <laughs> The compacted, which is called compactions. And when doing a read request, reading from multiple levels and uh, mem tables. So this, is, uh, this slide shows about how LSM works. Suppose inserting into message table, use ID code 31 or 999 or uh, 10,000. <coughs> These writes are going to mem table and the write ahead log. When mem table gets full, it's <coughs> writing to a new SST file with sorted orders. So <coughs> the data is sorted, the new SST files are created. On the other hand, there are multiple existing SSTs. Then <coughs> these ST, SST files, multiple SST files are merged, then compacted, then written to new SST files sequentially. <coughs> so, Actually, uh, even though you uh, did a lot of uh, modifications, uh, uh, random right, random right, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Even though you do a lot of random lights, actually when uh, on the LSM side, uh, these SSD files are, <coughs> are sequentially read, read and written to the, uh, the storage. So, and even though you uh, do hundreds or thousands of uh, random loads modifications, only do a couple of uh, the, uh, sequential reads and writes uh, on the LS LSM side. So uh, this is very efficient for uh, hard disk drive. So uh, actually, LSM is pretty popular on the hard disk drive side. For example, HBase. HBase is a LSM database, and <coughs> which is very popular on the hard disk drive. And LSM handles compression better. So LSM on the SSD file, the SSD file size is much larger than the InnoDB page size. So 16 megabytes or 32 megabytes is pretty common. So the, uh, here's the uncompressed, the 16 megabyte SSD file. Then it's, it's compressed. <coughs> so LSM uh, compresses data. So compressed, then the new SSD file becomes five megabytes, for example. So, uh, but it's not, Actually, aligned, uh, the alignment overhead is much smaller than in the DB. So the so OS sector size is only four kilobytes. So even though it's aligned, the five megabyte <laughs> SSD files was aligned to five megabytes. So no alignment overhead. So alignment overhead is pretty negligible. So <laughs> the, this is a, another advantage. And the LSM, by nature, has lots of reducing space and light amp uh, amplification techniques. So it's append only. So append only means so you don't need uh, uh, read, modify, light, and uh, you don't need uh, double light. <coughs> and prefix key encoding. This is an interesting feature uh, that many SSD files, uh, LSM databases have. Suppose there is a primary key or an ID one and ID two and ID three, and uh, these four entries have the same ID one and ID two. So if uh, it's, uh, the entire data is stored, then it's the ma there, there are many duplicates. It's wasting space. So the before doing compressions, the RocksDB or many LSM databases just <coughs> trims the same prefixes, then writing these uh, data uh, to disk with compressions. So this uh, space, uh, saves space pretty significantly. Zero filling metadata is another interesting feature in RocksDB. So when uh, doing updates, RocksDB assigns the sequential IDs. It's for, uh, used for consistent reads. So sequential ID is incremented. And <coughs> these IDs are uh, using about seven bytes. So when uh, writing to storage in RocksDB, so if RocksDB decides that the sequential ID are not used by any other, client, uh, other clients, so it's uh, converts to zero. I said zero compresses data very well. 
than one, two, three, four, five, six, or some arbitrary in the integers. So zero compresses data pretty well. So this actually saves space. So uncompressed data size is not much different, but the, after compression, the size difference is huge. So the LSM databases like SoxDB, it's uh, very optimized for after compression, the space. This is a uh, compaction algorithm of the RoxDB, the level. So when writing data, the mem, uh, mem table data is first written to level zero. And level zero, after level zero getting full, it's moved to level one. And the le if after level one getting full, uh, the data is moved to level two. So there are multiple levels, and uh, bo uh, bo uh, below levels have uh, many more uh, uh, tanks space by defa default. And uh, for each level, data is sorted within each level. So read amplification is relatively higher. Uh, I'll talk about later. But, but the space amplification, it's a, it's a kind of a high school math, but uh, the space amplification is 11%. So this is much smaller than the fragmented B3 so by it. Uh, it's more often uh, exceeds 50%. So the LSM database is, is very good for reducing a space and light amplification. But nothing comes without cost. <laughs> Actually, read penalty is pretty high. So this is an example that shows that InnoDB is much more efficient for reads <laughs> than RoxDB. So this is an example select. Select ID1, ID2 time <laughs> from T, where ID1 equals 100, where, and ID2 equals 100, order by time, descending of scans. And there's an index on ID1, ID2, and time. So these queries are called a coupling index <laughs> range scans. So all necessary data is stored <coughs> with the same index. So range scan with coupling index is done by just reading leaves sequentially. So the all necessary data is stored within the uh, concatenated the leaf pages. So in the way, so technically, it's just doing a single random read I.O. is enough to complete requests. But RoxDB is more complicated because there are multiple levels. And for each level, the data may exist. So in the RoxDB side, <coughs> reading from mem tables and the all levels are needed. And then they're doing much. So this is much higher overhead compared to InnoDB. So uh, reducing the read penalty is really important for LSM database. The common technique to <coughs> mitigate this issue is Bloom filter. So Bloom filter, with Bloom filter, so it uh, checks key may exist or not without reading data, reading data, and skipping read IO requests if it definitely does not exist. So RoxDB has an API called a key may exist, for example, if level one, level two returns false, then it skips reading from uh, uh, blocks. So in this case, the reading steps was reduced from five to three, which is really efficient. So these uh, read optimization techniques is used in RoxDB. Another penalty is delete. This is an example. So we're inserting into T, but it's one, two, three, four, five. And uh, suppose you delete, <coughs> delete table T, where ID less than or equal to four. Then the RoxDB adds a tombstones called tombstones, uh, delete one, two, three, four. But tombstones were not, uh, cannot be deleted when uh, uh, deleting data. So suppose uh, you uh, select a table, select counter from T, the counter asterisk from T. Then even though there's only one record, it actually uh, seeks many tombstones plus uh, real records. So in this example, the uh, uh, RoxDB scans the five key entries to complete this request. So delete at the tombstones <coughs> and when reading, ignoring all puts for the same keys. And tombstones cannot disappear because the uh, same put may exist on the uh, below levels. For example, if when you overwrite the ID1 many times, the ID1 may exist on the many uh, levels. So when you delete uh, after that, 
then the delete uh, cannot be disappeared because delete is a marker that ID1 was removed. So the tombstones can disappear until bottom level compaction happens. So th that's why that there are many, when you uh, delete huge number of records, there are many tombstones and the select counter or range scans uh, it becomes very expensive. <coughs> so some needs need to scan lots of tombstones. This is very inefficient. So RoxDB recently added uh, optimizations to mitigate this issue. It's called single delete. So if put for the same key, it's guaranteed to happen only once. Then single delete can even put itself. For example, uh, the same example, but uh, the delete can uh, delete put and uh, delete uh, this myself, the single delete themselves. Then the only one, the put, uh, exists. So the select count uh, just scans only one record. So this is very efficient. And MyLogs uh, uses single delete for all secondary indexes and primary keys. So this is a short summary of the LSM. So LSM on disk and flash. <coughs> My talk is pretty uh, focused on flash, but uh, originally the LSM was very optimized for disk because lower write penalties, uh, but higher read penalties. So you cannot use LSM everywhere, but uh, if the de applications are very light heavy and reads small, uh, then the LSM can work better than uh, bit read. LSM on flash. So the main advantage is uh, the smaller space with compressions and the lower write applications. These are very important for flash. The main disadvantage is higher read penalties, but LSM is, uh, sorry, the flash is very good for reads. So the, in many cases, the higher read penalties can be absorbed by a faster flash devices. So HBase is a distributed uh, NoSQL LSM database. It's on top of Hadoop, the HDFS. <coughs> I think this, uh, I have not uh, done any surveys, but uh, I think the, this is, uh, HBase is probably the most widely used LSM databases in the world right now. And at Facebook, we use HBase for Facebook messaging uh, on disk side. <coughs> but my uh, talk is focused on uh, RoxDB, another LSM called RoxDB. So RoxDB was forked from LevelDB, uh, key value uh, LSM persistent store, which is embedded and can, so can be uh, used for many applications. Data stored locally and optimized for fast storage. So it's written uh, by a modern C and C++, which is very efficient. And LevelDB was created by Google. And Facebook uh, forked and developed RoxDB uh, to use more backend services and the more critical services. So we used that many backend services at Facebook and uh, many external large services like uh, Pinterest or Airbnb uh, use RoxDB. So my logs, this is the main focus <laughs> of the uh, talk. So MyRox is a RoxDB storage engine for MySQL. So MySQL has a feature called uh, pluggable storage engines. Uh, though very few uh, uh, external storage engines, but most, uh, mostly the inner is used, but it's possible. So uh, it's possible to create a new, my own or our own, the storage engines. Uh, on, uh, to, and integrate with MySQL. So we want to take both LSM advantages and MySQL features. LSM advantage means smaller space and lower light amplification. MySQL features means SQL or replication or connectors and many tools. So we, at Facebook, we have huge assets of the MySQL uh, already. So there are many MySQL uh, clients relying on MySQL features. So it's not realistic to <laughs> switch to uh, no, other NoSQL databases like my, uh, HBase. So it, it, it takes very long time to rewrite clients. So uh, we take a approach, we have taken an approach to create a new storage engine so, uh, called MyLox. Uh, by using that, the up, up existing clients don't have to, to be rewritten. So it, it's kind of a drop in replacement of the InnoDB. It's fully open source, 
And we are working with the MariaDB. Uh, so we don't use MariaDB at Facebook, but uh, uh, there are many uh, great uh, the internal developers at MariaDB. So we, we are working with uh, a guy uh, from uh, MariaDB. So it's uh, getting a much uh, development speed. It's pretty fast. It's getting uh, stable. It, it's, our state is uh, RC. So it's published to GitHub, so github.com, uh, Facebook, uh, MySQL 5.6. So major feature sets in MyLox is uh, similar feature sets as in Ruby. So we are trying to uh, replace some of the existing uh, in Ruby based applications with MyLox. So it's similar feature sets as in Ruby. So it's transactional. So atmicity means commit and rollback. Um, and MVCC, so non docking leads, uh, non docking consistent leads. And uh, lead committed and repeatable lead. So these are the major the transaction isolation levels. So we uh, decided to take a uh, Postgres style repeatable lead approach, which is a bit different from uh, in the uh, repeatable lead. But anyways, uh, this isolation level is supported. And crash safe slave and master, this is pretty important features in in the So when slave is crashed, then just restarting the instance, then slave can repoint, uh, restart the applications. We added the same feature in LoxDB, MyLox. And online backup, so logical backup by MySQL Lamp, uh, so it can take a consistent backup, logical backup by MySQL Lamp. Another important backup is my, uh, binary backup. So we use extra backup in LoxDB, uh, especially for creating a new replica. So uh, we create a new replica by binary backup. Uh, we wanted the uh, same feature in MyLox, so we created uh, open source binary backup tool called MyLox underscore hot backup, which is, or, is also uh, published as open source. So we, uh, we provided pretty much the same feature sets uh, to, uh, comp uh, to uh, work with, uh, switch from NDB. So performance and efficiency in MyLox. So we uh, added many features to work efficiently. So InnoDB is a really great database, which is very robust and which is very fast. So uh, we have to add many features to complement the InnoDB. So the space and light amplification is it's LSM advantage. So it's, uh, I talked a lot before, uh, so it uh, saves space a lot. Uh, the more important uh, issue is leads and delete penalties. So improve, improving lead performance is very important. Uh, so we added several features. So one example is reverse order column family, so reverse order index, I'll talk about later. And single delete, and a prefix bloom filter. For example, when uh, running a select, where ID code one and time larger than something, then using, still can use bloom filter for the equal conditions. So using Bloom filter for ID, then uh, filtering records, then scanning by uh, time. And mem comparable keys uh, is, so when comparing records, so my ISM or InnoDB uh, doing a, uh, more expensive comparisons because of the case insensitive character sets to support that. So the MyLox, they uh, did a couple of optimizations to, uh, when using case sensitive, just comparing uh, keys by single mem mem memcmp uh, uh, functions, which is much faster than uh, comparing uh, by its interaction rate. And optimizer statistics, we also added that. The reverse kernel families, the RoxDB is great at scanning forward, but the uh, order by descending uh, is slow. Suppose the Facebook's use case, so Facebook suppose, uh, has a news feed, then showing messages, but it's pretty the time series data, so the newer messages comes fast. So this means that we do lots of descending scans order by desk. But with prefix key encoding, the descending scan is really bad. So, uh, so this is an example. So the ID1 and ID2, these are the same. It's uh, removed with the prefix encoding. But when doing a descending scans, so reading from the back, so four, three, two, one, but to read from the de descending orders, then it has to uh, the reconstruct 
the prefix keys. So the external overhead is added to that. So to mitigate these issues, uh, we uh, implemented the reverse order of the current families. So just storing the data in reverse order. Then, uh, without uh, reconstructing the prefix keys, just reading from, uh, uh, from the head, so 4231. So actually, this is a trade-off. So with the reverse order current families, the ascending scans become slower, but the uh, descending scan uh, becomes faster. So uh, we have a clear use case that uh, some in indexes are used for descending scans. Uh, so we use that feature for such a descending scan uh, centric uh, types of applications. The online backup. The online backup, so it, uh, we created that. So it clones a uh, MyRox instance while the server is running. So in the RoxDB side, write ahead log and data uh, are immutable. So uh, RoxDB creates uh, uh, snapshots uh, using RoxDB internal API, uh, then creating hard links then uh, copying the immutable files one by one. But uh, the data, original data was updated. So when uh, there were many uh, huge updates, the older hard links the occupied space. So we periodically updating snapshots in order to uh, save space or not apply to many right ahead logs. So after that copying files, then starting servers, so and we also support a streaming backup, which is supported by uh, extra backup too. So extra backup. So creating a backup from a one server, then creating a, uh, storing a backup on a remote server. So you don't need to need a space on local, local servers. So the MyRox hot backup takes care of everything. Uh, it's very similar to extra backup. So optimizer statistics. The query plans uh, need index statistics. So MyLock stores index statistics in persistent data dictionary. So we need uh, index statistics. So otherwise, the optimizer uh, decides very bad query execution plans. So when creating data files, SST files, the index cardinality statistics are also calculated and updated in MyLock. Then it's, they are added to the SST files. Then data dictionary is also updated. So data files are created uh, during compaction of memory table flash. So uh, they, uh, everything is done during that. So in InnoDB, to update optimizer statistics, it leaves uh, pages randomly. So it's called an index dive. So this uh, sometimes increases the read uh, query latencies. But no index dive happens in MyRox. OK, the performance. So, my colleague, the Mark Callahan, did a lot of uh, performance testing recently in MyRox and in Ruby. So we uh, have a tool called a LinkBench, uh, uh, which is very similar to the Facebook's workloads. And uh, we measure space usage and QPS, the so flash leads per query and flash writes per query, and data loading performance and uh, query latency. And he also tested uh, on hard disk drive. The database size. So database size was, this is the biggest reason why we decided to create, uh, start this project. So the LSM database, the RoxDB, uh, complex by ZLib, it's actually the, uh, the space was less than half compared to a compressed, the inner DB. So the Y axis, the uh, Y axis is space and X is a uh, time of the running benchmarks. So the MyRox space was about 400 gigabytes, and the uh, compressed InnoDB was about 900. So it about doubles the space. And the uncompressed InnoDB uh, uh, uses even more space. So this is, uh, clearly shows that the MyRox does reduces space uh, a lot compared to InnoDB. The QPS. The QPS was also uh, great. So we added many features like a single delete or reverse column families uh, or mem comparable keys. So the, with RoxDB ZLib, the QPS was at about 30,000. Then the, InnoDB, the compressed InnoDB was about uh, 20,000. So the MyRox actually got, <laughs> got the 1.5x, the better QPS. The flash leads per query. 
So this shows how many disk reads uh, the reads from flash per uh, query. So there are cache. So uh, the many data is cached. So when uh, hitting a cache, then uh, skipping the reads from a storage. So the MyLock space was about half compared to a compressed inner DB. This means a smaller space. The smaller space means the cache hit, hit rate becomes improved. So that's why the risk read uh, frequency uh, per query was the smallest when using a LoxDB. The flash light per query, the light amplification, this was uh, the, the impressive numbers. So from IOSTAT and from flash device, uh, these results are a bit different because the flash uh, does the internal light uh, operations called the garbage corrections, so which was not reported uh, by IOSTAT. So in the Levy was, uh, the ROX Levy was about 10x the smaller than the ROX uh, in the Levy. So this was the uh, benefit of the using LSM. So data loading, the migration performance. So this is the time uh, of the some of the uh, simulated uh, the databases. So dumping from a running the fragmented the InnoDB index, uh, then reloading to a uh, InnoDB or MyLogs by MySQL dump pipe the MySQL command. So InnoDB to InnoDB, the logical copy completed about the six hours and seven minutes. So the size was, the, after load, loading data, the index was not fragmented. So the space was reduced a bit. Uh, now on this hand, on the MyLock side, uh, the road uh, finished in the four hours and 20 minutes. So it's relatively, the update speed is faster in the LSM side, this shows that. The query latency, the query latency is, is also important because latency uh, is affecting the user experiences. So this is the cumulative response times. So uh, num number of queries is uh, uh, the vertical ones, then the X ones is uh, query latencies. So in the DB, uh, what's a bit faster, but uh, the 2X locks DB. 2X MyLox means uh, since the MyLox uh, space becomes half, so we decided to run the same <laughs> size of the MyLox uh, instance on the same spec servers where the single inner DB is running servers or the 2x MyLox running on the same servers. So we just consolidated more MyLox instances and the major performance. Uh, the cumulative response times was not surprisingly not so bad uh, when using flash devices. So finally, uh, Mark also tested on hard disk drive. The hard disk drive is uh, it de highly depending on the right workloads, but uh, uh, this it shows that the QPS was pretty good on the, uh, uh, the MyLock side. Because uh, if you do many random writes, then hard disk drive is really bad for random uh, six. So the LSM doesn't do so frequently on the, uh, about the random writes. So this optimizes this, uh, the overhead. So, the, so far, we have proved uh, proved that uh, MyLox works really good, but uh, there are many limitations. So MyLox is relatively newer project, but uh, InnoDB is very robust. It has, it's the, the most popular transactional database uh, in MySQL. So it has many features, and MyLox misses uh, lots of features, actually. So uh, we don't support the online DDL or foreign keys or spatial index or full text index yet. So we have, uh, have plans to add that, but actually on the, uh, uh, we have not supported it yet. And the InnoDB supports next key locking, which is needed to make statement replication work. Now the MyLox doesn't support that. So because it's a bit uh, complex to add that features. So we decided to use a low-based binary logging so with, uh, without supporting next key lock. So uh, this is a feature uh, limitation. So when using MyLox, you need to use the low base binary logging. And for durability with XA uh, means uh, in the flash log at TRX commit equal one uh, is not supported yet. Actually, so we rely on the slaves. 
So the single database is not fully durable. So when losing some database instance, then just recover uh, from other instances or other master or slaves. This is pretty similar to uh, Hadoop's uh, HDFS approaches. So just relying on other uh, the replicas. So uh, we heavily rely on MySQL replications, but we have some plans to add for durability features. And we don't support all direct, all direct in LoxDB yet. And as I described before, so either order by desk or ascending is slow. And uh, all modifications of the running transactions are kept in memory. So when uh, start transactions and like uh, modifying a huge number of records, then it, every modification is kept, uh, kept in memory, so which means uh, you actually you can't do that. So we have some special options for bulk loading, so load data in file. So we optimized for that to work. But uh, on the general workloads, it's recommended to use shorter, short transactions right now. Okay, so this is a summary. So MySQL, MyLox, uh, it's a pretty important project for us. So efficiency is very important at Facebook. So to us, the saving space by half is a very big deal for us. So there are trade-offs across space and light and read amplifications. And uh, NSM reduces space uh, and light, but increases read. So there are many read penalties. So we started uh, the Mylox project to take advantage of the LSM properties. So, and all Mylox source codes, and including uh, backup tools, are open sourced. So we don't have enterprise versions. So this is not our business model. So we uh, open sourced everything. So you can take, uh, download the Mylox now, and you can try that. So, and uh, feedbacks. So we, we uh, maintain issues on the GitHub issues. So if you have seen any uh, problems, then just file that uh, issue on that uh, GitHub. Uh. And, but please don't take that Facebook is going to free replace in the with my logs. So uh, there are trade-offs, and uh, there are many uh, applications of Facebook that are uh, really read-heavy, and it's not uh, practical to replace uh, with LSM databases. So we continue to use in Ruby, and we, uh, start, uh, we will start using MyLox for some types of applications. But uh, we will uh, use both. And in, in Ruby, it's a very great database, general purpose database. And actually, I will have uh, a MyLox more detailed talk uh, in April, which is Pelicon Live, the Pelicon Data Conference. Uh, I have a tutorial, three-hour tutorial, uh, and I'll talk uh, more depth about, um, uh, in depth about MyLox at that conference. And finally, so we are hiring at Facebook. So we hire the product, production engineers uh, in MySQL or many other uh, databases. And we also hire the engineering, uh, engineering team. Uh, we hire people. So uh, if you are interested, feel free to uh, talk to us. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. Are there any questions? Sure. What is the percentage of the placement of InnoDB which uh, MyLox? Could, could you say that again? Sorry. Percentage of the placement of, of InnoDB with MyLox in Facebook. The, uh, the question was uh, uh, replacing InnoDB with MyLox. Uh, existing information is replacement from you know the bar with my logs. So uh, we have, so as I talked during the slides, so LSM databases is optimized for light heavy uh, light workloads, uh, uh, light heavy workloads, or read small the workloads. So if uh, on very read heavy applications, so it's not uh, practical to replace with uh, my logs. So we are trying to replace on, uh, on the light heavy applications or the space constrained applications. Are there any other questions? Yeah. yeah.
Could you raise your hand, please? Ah, over there. Yeah, I heard that you support uh, snapshot isolation. So it means that if you want to get serialization of transaction you, or statement-based replication, basically, you need to lock the reads. Do you have any idea of the impact of locking ever, every rules for reads? So uh, the question is the statement-based replication. So sub, uh, have, uh, we sub, uh, complement the statement replication. Is that yeah. the uh, question? Plan to support uh, serial uh, uh, yeah. isolation. So actually, uh, at Facebook, we uh, actually we are using state, uh, low based binary logging. So that's why uh, we decided not to spend uh, resources, uh, engineering efforts to support the next key logging. So, but uh, this is our reason. But uh, if there, I know that there are many people, external people, still rely on the statement based binary logging. So we may add that feature. In the later, but uh, next key locking means uh, it uh, needs extra locking, so which we definitely had performance. So this is trade off. But uh, we we, uh, we have not decided yet, but uh, we we may consider definitely. Thank you. More questions? No. Okay. Very. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.